Hey everyone, uh, today I'm going to tell you uh, why exactly I say to never allow a Calvinist to rebuke you, that is if you're a Christian brother or sister, or even to give you moral advice, whoever you may be. Now, should a Calvinist, um, should a Calvinist try to give you moral advice, here's what you, here's what you do. You immediately ask them, okay, why, uh, according to your system, right, according to your theology, God uh, has predetermined everything, right? He's also predetermined my evil. So let's say a Calvinist uh, or my evil deeds. If, if Cal Let's say a Calvinist, you, you're a Christian, you're a Christian brother or, or a Christian sister. And um, a Calvinist comes up to you and say, you shouldn't slander other people. You be in his face and tell him, well, according to your theology, what's what's your problem? God hasn't God predestined, if I send anybody, hasn't God predestined that? And I really couldn't change that. So wh why why are you telling me this? It's predetermined by God. And guess what? Given that I am a Christian, right? Um, even my sins, uh, because it's an action. And uh, God says, right, uh, that um, uh, every evil ends up to be made uh, or used for the good of those who love him, right? Which is the believers, right? So turn it right around the camera and say, uh, even my evil deeds, God has a purpose in them. And I would rather, I would praise God. I would glorify God. Going to your sister, what do you mean? Don't do this. And always challenge them on that. If if you're an atheist or you're an agnostic and a Calvinist tells you, say, well, God has predestined me to do that. So what's your problem? Right? I just killed 10 people. So so what? I mean, God predetermined it. And you should be, I mean, you should be praising God, Mr. Calvinist, because after all, isn't God using my evil actions for yoga and the elect's good? Right? See, it's it's useless to even engage in a discussion about morality with the Calvinist, to be honest with you. It's it's as useless as with a compatibilist atheist, neuroscientist. You can't really engage with them, right, in a moral discussion. Because they would just argue, okay, it's brain chemistry that causes um, you to have the illusion of self-awareness and also the illusion of free will. Thereby, you think that you have free will, but you really don't. Well, if that's the case, then um, what's the argument? What, what are you mad about? Right? Live, live consistent with that worldview and don't ever be mad about anything again. Right? If somebody tomorrow molests your child, right, say, well, the brain chemistry determined it. right? And if you're a Calvinist, just add on top of that, well, God determined the brain chemistry, right? and God determined the actions to secondary causes. right? So, yeah, what, what are you worried about? And God, after all, he has a good plan for the elect by doing so. So you should be happy. Every rape, imagine this, every rape, every slander, every murder, Every brutal, brutal act, imagine the most brutal acts of violent um, murder, uh, uh, torture, rape, what have you, right, that ever happened from uh, Adam up to now. Every single act of that, as a, uh, a Calvinist, should just be praising God. For those activities specifically, Calvinists try to get, uh, uh, try to of course go around this and say, well, it all ends up to the glory of God. They say, but the problem is they don't act consistent with it. If that is consistent, then they should praise God for the very sins that they commit, and they should praise God for the very sins that others commit as well. This is the thing: don't don't let a Calvinist look down upon you. Don't give them even the opportunity, right? Don't even give them the opportunity to make a moral judgment. Ignore them, right? Give, give what, what I said, to say it back to them, and thereafter ignore them. Dust your sandals, 
right? If they don't realize that they are in gross error, just dust your sandals and walk away and never look back again, right? I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired of Calvinists, you know, telling other Christians what is moral and what is not. From this time on, if a Calvinist tells me anything I'm wrong, I'm just going to say, there is no wrong, really. Right? Because it's all predetermined by God, and wrong is really good. Because it's used, or it is predetermined by God to begin with, to must happen, and since God is all good, the evil also is used for good. So there's no problem. There's no point in you rebuking me. You should let it play out as it is, as God has predetermined me to do, and it will end up for your own good. And of course, I being an elect, it would end up for the good of me too. And if I am not an elect, well, then guess what? Then I am an object of wrath, and there's nothing you or I can do about it. It's really that simple. It's it's a mockery of God, right? And this is the last time I'm going to listen. I'm going to... I'm, I'm going to tell you, all you folks out there, even if you're not Christians, I'm, I'm sick and tired of Calvinists, right? Uh, even those, uh, and I'm not, I'm, I'm four point, five point, I really don't care anymore. If you think that God has predetermined every action, that's it. I'm not going to take you seriously. I'm not going to take moral advice from you. I'm not going to take rebuke from you until you change your mind about Calvinism. It's very easy, just like a Muslim. Right? Leave that ideology behind you. All right? Join the One Save, Always Save Bible community, the Bible believers, wherever they may be, and everything will be well. Right? I'm a One Save, Always Save Bible believer myself. And I'm very happy where I'm at. Amongst my brothers and sisters in Christ, like we have Brother Leighton Flowers, I have my brother Marcus. I have my brother Ralph Yankee Arnold, right? And there's many, many David Stewart from JesusSavior.com. There's tons of people who really um, fight for the truth, right? We adhere by scripture. And even, even people like, I mean, uh, my brother Thick Shades, right? My brother the Panda Man, right? These people, right? are the people, if they give me moral advice as a Christian, if they give me a rebuke, I shall listen. Not because the people in and of themselves, right? Because of, uh, of man, no. But because they stand upon the word of God, right? They read the Bible, I read the Bible. We come off to, to the same essential conclusions. We read the same, we read the concept of the same, or derive the same concept of God from the scriptures. The Calvinists derive a totally different God, or a very different God. A God that has predetermined everything, even the evil acts, which obviously we have discussed this, as the Preet has discussed this, which they got from, uh, in part, to Narcissism, and of course to St. Augustine of Hippo. And uh, yeah, basically that's... Um, just a rehashing of, of old heresies, right? So that that's it, folks. I mean, sure, give me, uh, if you, if you want to make a response video, right, uh, and tell me how you feel about your encounters with, with Calvinists, um, I would like to hear it. Please make as many views as you can in case the Calvinists have bothered you with their moral high ground, right? If, if they have bothered any of you atheists or any of you agnostics or any of you deists or and especially, of course, my brothers and sisters in Christ, if any of you who are not Calvinists, if you have been bothered by Calvinists before, please make a video, right? And uh, let's let's tell this these people once and for all, this cult once and for all, that we are not going to be bullied any longer. We are not going to be bullied around by a bunch of Calvinists who believe that God has predetermined everything. Because then our very bullying would be in the predetermined plan of God 
and it would only end up if we are believers and the Calvinists accept that some of us are believers, well, then so be it. Then it just ends up for our own good, right? And there's no reason for us to fight it unless, of course, we feel like fighting it because that would mean now God himself, his time, his appointed time for us is coming. So we will automatically abstain. We don't need the Calvinists, right, to tell us that. It's really that simple. The Calvinists should sit back, right? Mind their own business. Never talk to anybody, right? Because everything is predetermined by God. In fact, it makes even absolute, even their even the resting and relaxing, even that is absurdity. Really, if you think about it. Every, everything is absurd. Every action. It reduces them completely to absurdity. They can't do anything because the moment they think or they act and they think that they are doing this by themselves, obviously because they feel that, that it is their free will, they are not feeling a compulsive force behind them, right? Which, of course, uh, it is intuitive. We intuitively know that it's not God who is driving us at each and every moment, right? Especially when we have evil thoughts. But the Calvinist is then forced to admit, no, 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 it must be God, which puts an absurdity into every single thought that the Calvinists have. This is how absurd Calvinist theology is. It is completely bogus. It is shameful, right, that they have gained such a high ground amongst Christians. This must stop. My brother Leighton Flowers, check out his latest video at the Amira B channel. He's doing a great job exposing Calvinism. He's also exposed the arrogance of James White once again. I'm going to post that video up. It will be up on my channel, perhaps in an hour or so. So, yeah, I mean, there's not much uh, left to say, right? Other than uh, the next time a Calvinist tells me, makes a moral uh, or a so-called gives me a moral advice or any uh, I'll just uh, tell him it's predetermined by God and that's it period nothing to nothing to tell me about it's absurd so folks um, yeah please uh, share your thoughts in, in a video and uh, let me know so we can team up we can get together and we can stop this bullying once and for all and uh, let me just say this, all right? Christ Jesus died for all human beings. Being God manifest in the flesh and rose again on the third day. He didn't die, as the Calvinists say, for less than 50% of humanity, known as the elect. No, he died for everybody. And the unelect are just a category of people who happen to be those who choose to blaspheme the Spirit of God, which is the only unforgivable sin. And the elect chose not to, thereby believing the gospel, what I just laid out. Simply trusting the gospel. Very easy. Nothing difficult. Nothing, oh, I got to work to prove my salvation. Oh, I got to work to maintain my salvation. Oh, I got to work for my salvation. None of those. Okay? I work. Why? Well, because I want to avoid God's chastening and I want to gain rewards. This is what the once saved, always saved Bible believer believes. Actually, there's three things. One, because they love God, right? And out of love, many are motivated to do that. But then also, of course, um, God has promised us rewards. And he has promised, uh, and he has also stated that he would chasten us if we don't. And lose rewards is part of that chastening. This all combined, actually this is three. Again, we see um, this might just correlate to God's triumph nature because there are three aspects there too. May just be a coincidence, but it could be. Whatever the case may be, this is the reason why we, the once saved Bible believers, the easy believers and Bible believers, what motivates us to work. It's a very different motivation from a Calvinist, right? And of course from Armenians and Catholics. But Calvinists claim that they believe in faith alone. But we have a very different definition. Let nobody tell you that the once saved, always saved, easy believers and Bible believers 
promote sin. No, we don't. We don't want to lose rewards. We don't want to be chastened by God. Right? We don't want that. This is why we would not promote sin ever. It's a joke. And of course, we love God too much to say that you can sin all you want just because you're saved. No. Because whilst there is a sense that you can, there's another sense which you can't. The sense which you can is that you're not going to lose salvation, neither is it going to show you that you're not really saved, but it's going to cause an immense amount of chastening until you break down completely. And of course, if you don't want that, then, then you shouldn't sin. It's really that simple. Right? This is how it is. This is what people always misunderstand, and the Calvinists, they love to jump on that. Easy believism, childlike faith. That's the real deal. God bless you guys and uh, take care, especially that the Calvinists won't deceive you.